growing up, did it feel like more responsibility fell on your shoulders? Did you provide emotional support maybe even to your parents or help raise your siblings? If so, you are not the only one. A new term on social media called eldest daughter syndrome has a lot of people sharing their own grievances. I'm back with Stephanie Wickstrom to talk about this growing conversation and how it ties into this idea of, and I hope I say this right, parentification. 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 <laughs> there we go. And so let's start first with what is eldest daughter syndrome? Yeah, so that is really, birth order has long been a fascination of psychiatrists, psychologists, and you know, it's really examining the way that birth order and gender are interpreted playing to create certain personality characteristics. So for eldest daughter syndrome, that's really a daughter who is taking on way too much responsibility, way too young. Often they're very perfectionistic, they're hyper nurturing and want to be everything to everyone. Well, and so I, I think too, we often see in birth order, mm -hmm. the oldest tends to have more responsibility. Right. So is this something that truly just falls on the oldest daughters or is this sometimes the oldest sons too? Yeah, the eldest child in general. And there's actually a lot of data on that. Um, you know, eldest children are much more likely to be in leadership roles. You could be up, it's 40% more likely to be a CEO if you are the oldest child. So many of our presidents have been oldest children. So there's something to it. There is. That increased responsibility kind of gives you some life lessons, right. but there has to be a downside to this too. Yes. Yeah, and, and that really comes into when we're seeing parentification. So, you know, when we're seeing um, parents who might not have the inner or outer resources to really parent their children and they're leaning on their children, you know, that's where the, the shadow of this comes in. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit more because I think, you know, oldest children tend to have that responsibility. Help your sister with this, help your, your brother with this. When, when does it cross that line? Right, yeah, that's, that's really, you know, dependent upon the child too and their personality, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, whenever you're relying on your child for support and you don't have support, that, that really might be an indicator that you need to, you know, develop some other resources. But children, um, you know, you really need to look out for the children who are very, the perfect child, right? right? because those are the ones that are really gonna take this burden on and who need to be protected from themselves. Because they can develop into... Hyper-perfectionistic, yes. you know, anxious people. And okay, so, so we're talking about the difference between asking for a few more responsibilities, you're old enough to help, so I'm going to ask you to help, and the line kind of being crossed where I'm leaning on you for emotional support right. as my child to help me through this. Yeah, emotional support and also physical, like actual support, right? Yeah. So um, parents who are really suffering or maybe they're overworking, you know, there could be a lot of things that cause people, parents to not be present. Um, so, you know, they really have to protect children's need for play, for free time, and also a healthy modeling of that, right? So, you know, parents also need to be seen as having good balance in their lives. When do you find most of the patients who come see you, when do they realize that this had been going on their whole life and that they needed to seek help? Right, that's exactly it. It's not until much later in life. Often when they have their own children, they might be triggered with these memories and understanding of how you know how stressed they were as children so you know childhood is one of those things we don't really understand it until we're far beyond it it's our it's the norm you were born into it so this is your normalcy yeah. and so it's not until you're maybe dealing with your own kids and seeing how you're parenting them yeah. so how can you heal from this um, is there something that you can be doing if, if you realize this might be you how can you yeah. heal from it well, chances are if you are an eldest daughter, you you might be really good at taking care of other people's feelings, but not your own feelings, right? right. So getting very real with your own inner world. And there's some work we do surrounding like your inner wounded child, right? So journaling, um, you know, meditations, therapeutic work uh, to really get to know that inner wounded child and, and to connect with her with the resources that you have now as an adult woman where you know you can nurture yourself but you know any intervention is only as good as it allows us to heal today so we have to get real and, and understand the way that that might be impacting us right now so 
first step is to recognize and then get the help. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Yeah, really good conversation. And of course, the Counseling and Wellness Center of Pittsburgh has six locations in the areas we've told you about, plus online therapy too. If you're interested in their services, we have more information on our website at kdka.com slash talkpittsburgh. We'll be right back after the break.